Ed Hopwood's going to take us almost to the opposite end of the spectrum. Um, and this workshop's come about at Harping by the Sea this early this year, but I've been working on over a number of years really. And um, what happened was I used to play a, a, a number called a blow, uh, not blow light hell, swing job, swing job by Nine Below Zero. I used to perform that with my my band until an Australian friend of mine told me that what I was playing was actually a thing called Whamma Jamma, which I'd never heard of. This is going back a few years. And um, so a, a, um, a mission uh, arose of trying to figure out what he was on about and then discovering that there were distinct similarities and trying to get a timeline and, and work my way back with limited resources and find out, you know, where the DNA came from and how to perhaps by drilling backwards to um, glean some more ideas about how to crack this piece. So um, <clears throat> what I've got, what I wanted to say to you uh, very quickly, if I just show you on my website, if I can, um, if I bring, I don't know if you can, hold on one second, I'm just trying to bring my, my own website up here, doesn't seem to be working. Okay, well look, on my, on my website you will find a uh, timesheet, or rather a, a sheet like this, the song structure, okay? You will also find a copy that you can download of all the background information and tabs to the song. And what you may find is that, um, you know, what we'll probably find is an hour, hour and 15 minutes of doing this Harping by the Sea, we actually got through the whole thing. In 45 minutes, probably unlikely we'll achieve that. So I'm more than happy to come back and do a, a part two. Um, so what you need is an A harmonica, an A harmonica, we're in second position, so the song's in E. When he actually recorded it, uh, when I say he, it's Jay Giles' band that recorded it officially, and their harp player obviously was uh, Magic Dick. And they recorded two versions of the song on, on two albums. That's all on my website there. The one I'm going for is from the uh, Full House, the live album version, the second time it was released. So it's a bit quicker, a bit more furious. Um, and the question is, well, why would you want to uh, learn a, a number like this? And the answer, I think, is because it's a master class in what I call power harping, electronic harp, um, rock, blues rock harp. So it's very, very uh, muscle bound. And it means you've got to dig deep into your lungs. You've got to power through the, the microphone. I've got a a great human mic here, which was, was handmade. It's going through a, uh, a harp train, which is a lone wolf amp, um, to get the, try and get a bit of a distorted effect. That sort of thing. Um, and on the, on the uh, uh, report that I, that's on my website, there's a little uh, run through of what Magic Dick would have played through as well. Largely, he nicked his ideas from, on that, in that respect, from James Cotton. So it's a three minute masterclass on how to really bash through 12 bars and really make it stick. Um, and um, he throws the kitchen sink in here. In doing so, there are so many details and techniques. Um, he uses a hybrid embouchure. By that I mean he's using puckering and he's using blocking to great effect. I call it uh, front seat, front seat, uh, front seat passenger driving. So imagine you're in the front seat of your car, uh, so the left-hand side of the front of the car. That's where you're down the low end of the harp and you're puckering to control all the bend effects. Then when you want to get some slaps and stuff like extra effects, you reach out to the right-hand side of the front of the car to the steering wheel, and you, by blocking on your harp, you're jumping across and getting all that stuff in there. So um, it's a hybrid embouchure. Also, um, as you go through, if you listen carefully, there's a system he uses, which I've heard uh, Lester Butler from Red Devils use as well, where he'll be cupping the harp on some phrasing and gently opening it on other parts of the phrasing to give a different texture. <laughs> without amplifying.
that sort of thing. Um, so that's another overarching technique in the piece. Um, and um, as far as getting a rhythm and a timing, reflecting what Lee was saying there, I think for me it's largely a collision of, of music and dance. I find in terms of getting rhythm and timing, if you can get the beat in your head and then incorporate it and start to sway or move to a beat, then you're embodying the soul of the song and you can then start to bounce around and syncopate and leave gaps and so on. As Lee rightly said, I think a lot of the masters are as good at not playing as they are playing rather than fill a gap with lots of notes, duck out, duck and dive, double up, backtrack, that sort of thing. But by and large, just get that beat in your body. So <clears throat> I think it's important that very, very quickly, we'll just, um, that's what we've got to go through normally. So what happens is there's an intro where he does a flutter and a high pitch bend. He then has four 12 bar sections where he's playing pretty much by himself with just maybe a hi-hat on the drum kit to keep the beat. And then he goes into the, the purple section here where the band joins in. So you can download this from the Harp Surgery website. It's harpsurgery.com. Oh, here we go, thanks. So here it is, look. <clears throat> here we are today. There's me with the hat. If you scroll down here, Whammer Jammer Song Structure, click on there and you'll be able to save or download and print the structure there. Uh, if you go back as well then, the notes, click on there. <clears throat> and everything, all the background information, all the essential skills, uh, all the influences for the song, going into my form of tab there as well as you go through, all the articulation that he uses and so on. So that's, that's on the website there. There's also a, a, an old uh, post that I did that goes into it as well. So without further ado, I think it's important with um, this on the screen that we go through the track, we'll just listen to it so you get a, an overview of it. If I can find it. all there is to it so um <laughs> you get the idea within a space of three minutes there's 
everything and anything you ever want to know about playing power harp blues with blues rock okay how do you begin how do you begin to deconstruct and get under the skin of something like that um in our workshops at harp surgery the other week uh, the question was from one of the team how, how does someone how do the good players flow through what they do and i think we agree by and large it comes down to practice and scales if you know your pentatonic connections major minors and you can get loose within that add rhythm then all sorts of wonderful things roll out and we found um or i found a um, saxophone solo from a disco piece called street life by the uh, crusaders with ruby turner halfway through the track there's this monstrous jazz um, saxophone solo and I sat up and thought wow that's crazy how did he do that went online guy there deconstructed it, slowed it down and it was all pentatonic shapes and he echoed something that I'll tell you now when it comes to something like this to decon the deconstruction begins with in my opinion listen to listening to it as closely as you can really using your ear muscles and learning to sing it Go through it in your head so you could go to bed at night and go through it in your mind or you can sing it in the car and that way you'll start to incorporate the thing so when it comes to playing it you've got a mind map already or as magic dick himself would call it a corollary path okay don't ask me what corollary path means i haven't a clue but it sounds good um but you're establishing a mind map of how to deliver it what you need to deliver so if you can then go through each of the phrases and pick out the melodic thread don't worry about things like this and amplifiers and all the rest of it just get the tune find the tune you can add the textures in whichever way you choose later on or not you could play it acoustically or you could plug in and try and um, capture some of the effects that um, that uh, magic dick and other uh, electronic players would use as well so okay so the first phrase which was the on here will be the blue the blue box at the start clearly is something which makes everyone sit up and listen it's that flutter and then that high end blow bend so how does he do that and um, the flutter is essentially your mouth shape your embouchure and your tongue position are for tongue blocking but you're dabbing your tongue on and off so you're going for the four draw blocked her and then gently dabbing your tongue on and off if i didn't have a harmonica i'd be going la 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 it's not a sideways sweep it's an on off la 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 and then you get a combination of the cupped harp position of the harp <clears throat> and you're focusing on inhaling and as you inhale, just dab that tongue block on the shore. La, la, la. And let the harmonica resonate when you do take your tongue away and then just speed that up. For some people that's difficult, you're finding new muscle control. But it's a rapid, when he plays it's very rapid if i think of um, big water's boogie walter horn he starts that that same way that sort of thing so <clears throat> that's how he's what he's doing there but if we listen closely he scoops up under the four and then goes into the flutter to give it extra character so there's what i call a portamento carrying a scoop into or off a beat is a portamento so he's building into it bending into it slow motion do uh, la, 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 coming up from underneath and it's all really quick and then punctuates with a two in, bend the two down, slide off to the one as the drummer comes in with the down beat. So it's one, two, three. Ooh. 
then we're up the top end. <laughs> so the flutter, even before we got into the song, if you don't know how to flutter, that's a technique to, 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 to work out. So we're blocking, pump, tapping the, uh, the tongue on, dabbing the tongue on and off to open, release, open, close, rather, open, close, open, close. And it's sort of just under the la 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 against the top of the top of the front of the, the harmonica. As you draw breath in, get a nice resonant sound. But you go into it from underneath very, very quickly. I'm puckering that bend, initial bend in and then jumping down. I think that's what he would do. But if you want to, if you can bend the, the four by blocking, that saves the jump. Okay, then what does he do? We hear that. Okay, so into part of the harmonica, which some of us are a bit, you know, unfamiliar with. Um, how do we crack that? We whistle. Before you even try and play it, whistle. Whistle a high note and go from, what he does is that the first note, again, he carries up underneath, portamento. So he's bent on the nine blow bend under and, and lift it move to the 10 go the other way play the 10 and bend down so how would you whistle that if you do that try and try and whistle now that high pitch whistle and when you're whistling notice where your tongue goes I would very much recommend close your eyes when you do this and really register. And when you come to that end note, see if you can modulate it. See if you can introduce that vibrato so it's curving. It's not on off like a dab. We initially, that initial flutter would be called a tremolo. It's a stop start like an on off switch. Now we've got one sound which is modulating. It's a vibrato. It's a tongue vibrato use from your whistling position okay so that's the mechanism behind the scenes to actually get the note and get that force which is really really something that makes as i say grabs everyone's attention everyone's going okay 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 this guy means business um you've got to learn to be able to play blow blow notes blow bends and so to do that my top tips are, one, learn to whistle. Two, make sure you've got a good arm, sure you can play that hole accurately. Uh, three, I'm puckering with this. I cannot do blow bends at the top of the harmonica through tongue blocking. Um, through puckering, pursing, I'm creating a jet of air into that chamber, which I'm then turbocharging. Once I get a hit on that note, I'm then pushing. This is the physical side of it. And to get that read, that resistant read to uh, respond initially, I start off with what I call a grape pip. Imagine you're eating grapes and you have a pip on the end of your tongue and in between your lips you want to get rid of it. Tuh. Tuh. You spit the pip out. Tuh. And that's what you do in hole nine to get that read to respond. Tuh. And then you're forcing air in. You're turbocharging air into there from here. And just as when we whistle, if I whistle, I get two little pockets of air, little pouches, hamster pouches, which help me to create the pressure in that chamber and force the air in. I can then make a racket, get the reed to wobble, and as long as I've got um, power pumping through that chamber, I've got something to steer with. A bit like flying a kite in the sky. Once you've got the breeze under your kite, you can steer it. A bit like riding a bike up a hill. If you're pushing those pedals, you're going to get to the top. The moment you stop, you're either going to go backwards or wobble or both, but you're going to fall off. It's not going to happen. So if you don't know how to blow, Ben, um, let the neighbours know, put the dog out and uh, draw the curtains and spend an hour or two just making a racket. You might want earplugs too. One, and that's how, how you can access the whole skill. Then you can find the pressure point and the response and the re and in time you can start to economize back again and tell the neighbors they can come home so so we're going nine blow bend into nine blow sliding across to the nut a ten squeezing that down 
And as we bend it down, we're kind of releasing it and bending it and releasing and bending and releasing and bending to get that vibrato just by manipulating with our tongue. About halfway back in our mouth chamber. So from the start, it would be, whoops, cut it up. I could go on doing that for a little while. Then what we're doing is we're into the whole red section of the song. Okay, so we've got four 12 bar stretches to work through. That's probably all we'll achieve, I imagine, today. So let's focus on that. We've done the flutter. We've done the portamento idea, bending in. So now we've got a uh, glissando down. Down to the one draw. So it's down, port, it's a glissando down to the one. And a huff out. And then we close down, blocking for the three blow. Now if I just follow what I was preaching earlier on, I would go. So I'm singing it. I've got the rhythm. I then need to find the melody. So in its simplest form, we glissando down to the one draw, blow two, and then wobble between the three blow and the two blow. Or you'd imagine. So that's one way of doing it. In time, you've got to introduce the blocking. So that is implied. He's not actually doing that. What he's doing, he's coming down to the one draw, huffing into the next part and applying his tongue to single out the blow three. And then pump the tongue. So it's ah, la, la. And then simply by on, off, on, the net effect is da, da, la, on, off, on. Can you hear that? And then when you plug that in, whoops, sounds like, but it's not actually, in my opinion, not moving there. When I say my opinion, that reminds me of one other thing. The version I'm using is from the live album, uh, Full House. It's also recording on, recording on their Morning After album in the studio a year, about a year beforehand, I think. But if you go online and listen elsewhere, there are numerous examples of uh, Magic Dick playing the song. And I don't think any of them are exactly the same. And it's uh, similar to, you know, if you try and learn Duke by Little Walter, that's fine. But if you dig into the archives of uh, Chess Studios, there are probably many, many recordings and they pick, happen to pick that particular one. So don't get hung up on getting it absolutely right or if you change things along the way because the guys that wrote this and play it do that as well. Um, so we're just trying to find, get under the skin and find the, sort of the, 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 the main structure, the main thread of where they, where they take this. And then we open up rolling in da, 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 as we breathe in it's an open chord <laughs> breathing in <laughs> okay at which point i might open my hand position a little bit as i said earlier on it's cupped and it's loosened cupped and loosened okay um so that gives you that different texture. That's a tug, tug in the three blue note. Not a clean three, slightly bent. And I'm puckering that almost to make it bark like a dog. I, 
could block that as well. <laughs> So if you get that rolling, that would be your homework from this session, certainly. And then the out, the outro to that 12 bar. So you blow four, come back over the three and two draw, blow two, draw in again, sorry, and then it's four, three. we had before and we stop short and leave some space so if I play through that whole the first 12 bar on our sheet here again you can download that from the harpsurgery.com website so it's for the second 12 bar blue uh, 12 bar section <laughs> to snatch it back and as you snatch it back ta, you're doing a reverse T so you go up to the three there da, da, da. out to the two blow three draw bend down to the two draw out to the two blow okay so we're alternating underneath it is that rolling sound coming in then we got to fathom work out an outro and exit to this uh, 12 bars so he's doing an octave leap from one draw on the d up to the four draw sorry on the uh on the b flat b Puckering, but remember what I said originally about sitting in the front passenger seat. So I'm going to pucker the one, apply the tongue, jump up to the four. Noticing um, 
one or two um, we've been asking about me to, to bring the tabs up and follow those. I'm not actually going to do that. And that's on purpose because different people read different tabs and I would have to explain the tabs as well. And we've been here even longer. What we're trying to do, you can do that in your own time. You can take that away. You can listen to the track. We're on a limited time frame here. What I'm trying to do is educate our ear muscles. Okay. Because for me to produce the tabs, and I'd encourage it with everybody, it would have entailed going back and listening to a piece of vinyl and jumping the needle and exercising my ear muscles and figuring out, as I've explained, first of all, seeing the tune in my head, deconstructing that, finding out the thread of the melody that I'm listening to, and then working out the textures and the techniques that actually are added to that to provide the end product. So I really, really would encourage you not to just rely on tabs, but build up that technique in your ears, okay? That's where we're going today. The tabs are there for you, okay? So do download those. Do have a look through in your own time. Uh, there will be an awful lot more explanation for me to go through if we started to go that direction, but I get where you're coming from. See if you can, um, you know, see if you can start to build up your, I call it your ear muscle, your powers of, of listening and deconstruction this way for now, okay? So we're drawing one up to four. <laughs> Except we're puckering the one, applying the tongue, jumping to the four, and pumping in. Blow one, blow four, down to the draw bend in the three. So yeah, there's a lot going on in this tune. That's why we chose to look at it because it, it, the kitchen sink, everything's in each phrase. So if you're finding this difficult or you're trying to keep up, that's, that's expected. That's the nature of this piece. That's why we're trying to deconstruct it. So again, for this part, draw one, draw four. Pump the blow four. Jump one blow four. Blow to the three draw bell, and then we're in the two. Draw, draw, three bell, blow four. So again, just a little stroll up, two in. Two, three, four, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. Okay. So we've gone through two sections here of 12 bars. Let's take it from the top very slowly. First, the flutter. Now the blow bend. And now we're going to the first phrase. Glissando down. Scooping under the three, drawing. And then 
pumping the four draw to the blow five. So if I get away, uh, put the microphone down. Simple as that. But then when we then start to put the textures over, so that's three, three, four, three, four, three, four, five, three, four, three, four, five, three, four, three, four, five. Breathing in with the rig, I can then start to block stuff. <laughs> Slapping on, using the tongue block slaps there. Pull slaps, okay. Now we're going to go down to the blow one and work our way back up. One blow, two blow, okay. Under the two, to the clean two. One, two, bend on the two, draw the two. And rhythm wise, he's echoing what we just did. So we went. To where we were. Pretty much the same outro. And then we've done all the hard work because the last line we're just going to trill, but <laughs> it's a long trill. So we're going three, four trill. Two, two stretches of a clean 3-4 trill, two stretches of a dipped 3-4 trill, and then we're going to go bang bang in the three draw, like a dog bark, and then the two draw, clean draw in the two, got that, so the trill, Finally, almost like one, oh, one, two, three, four, da, 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 da. information there. I've got an eye on the clock here Sam so I can see we need to start to draw towards the end of this session. Everybody's probably knackered out by now. <laughs> so as I said at the beginning don't fret if you found it hard to keep up. Okay the resources are on my website. You can go on YouTube you can slow things down these days there and there are other mechanisms that you can use to do that too. Um, but take your time. Remember what I've said, learn the song, listen to the whole thing through so that you can sing it or whistle it. Get the thread of the melody. So that's going off and then decide where, where you're going to pucker, where you're going to block and build in the texture <coughs> with 
uh, microphone skills or not. Great song just to play acoustic with your hands. So this whole section, this whole opening section now, we'll take it slowly. I'm not going to go full, full tempo. But if you want to have a little go with me now, okay, let's go for it from the start. See if you can follow me. So we start off with a flutter, jump to the top end just to grab our audience's attention, okay? So here we go. So we're going up for the scooping on the four and then the flutter. And punctuate the two down on the beat. And then we're going up to the top under the nine, bending up and then out on the 10, bending down. Hit the nine and just kind of glissando off that to punctuate that bend, uh, sorry, that beat. And then we're going to descend down to the one and start the, the four, four 12 bar section, okay? So we go down. kicks in as well. So I'm going to come uh, over to you, Sam. Questions? Any questions at all? We rattled through an awful lot of stuff there. As I say, at Harping by the Sea, we had um, an hour and 15 or an hour and a half to go through the whole thing. So granted that we're all intermediates and advanced, did, did you have any questions? All I say is just uh, this, the video has been recorded, so um, it'll be available um, probably later next week. Um, and uh, so you can go through it um, a, a lot more slowly than what Richard did, but I think within the time that you had, Richard, you did an excellent <laughs> job. Um, so how do you want to come back and either do a recap or to then do part two where we can go into the, uh, the full electric section mm -hmm. here with the Back, which is actually a lot easier. This section, the red section, the semi-acoustic part, is probably the most complex part of the piece. It's, you know, it's a harmonica solo there. So are you, are you available next week at all, Richard? Sorry to put you on the spot. But... Quite likely, yeah. I mean, I, yeah, we'll pencil it in if, if folks would like to, then we've got some continuity. <laughs> I think we've got some aliens landing. Um. <laughs> but uh, again, you know, I know if, if you're not used to the, the song or the style and so on, it's new to you. Um, you know, it is like suddenly being hit by a freight train. However, don't panic. Don't panic. Okay. I've explained to you how to actually grab the bull by the horns and make sense of it. Um, to deconstruct something got to develop your ear muscles so you can sing it and you can really mm. listen to what's going on. Then listen to get the beat, get the nuances and the phrasing. You can sing it, 
then you can start to fathom out, well, which notes are my options here? Is he going for the blow three or the draw two? Is he puckering? Is he tongue blocking? Are the hands open? Are the hands closed? You know, did I get that little bit of timing quite right there? All right. And also give yourself a break in that the version you're listening to is one of many, many versions. So again, at some point, you might try and learn this by note by note, lick by lick. But then when you go out and play it, you play it your way with your little additions or changes, some of which you just won't be able to help. They will happen anyway. Yeah, I, th I think what you say is, is it's about getting to know the song, isn't it? Because I've done that too on quite a few tracks. Um, one of the ones I did was, if you remember, Night Boat to Cairo by, um, by Madness. Um, <laughs> There's a, a, I managed to get the, the music for the, um, for the middle solo and learnt it note for note, you know, and it, it, it slowing it down and, but, but it, it's getting to, it's getting to be able to sing that before you can actually play it. So, which is why I said on, on the, on my, my website, you know, to, to, I'm, you can, you can sit and you can observe and listen. That's great. I get that. But again, to actually participate in the whole process, you would need to have the song in your head or be at least familiar with the lie of the land. Um, but uh, there was something else came into my head there I was going to mention, which has just gone out the other ear, but I'm sure it'll come back. <clears throat> Did anybody have any questions at all so far? So probably the easiest thing to do is if you want to unmute un un your microphone, then you can come right to the top of my list so I can see here. What I was going to say again, oh. with this, in my experience, this particular track is a portal into uh, microphone amps, uh, rock blues, you know, power harping, that bracket of things, just as I feel something like um, Big Walter's Boogie lays out for you good practice for playing 12 bar blues around a, a, a Chicago blues boogie. He just lay, rolls it all out, says, here you go, this is where you get around. When it comes to the five chord, this is what you do. Here are your options. Beautiful. And in doing so, you learn the basic framework and then you can start to try and adopt some of that crazy tone and all the other licks and style uh, stylistic bits and bobs yeah i just had some uh, some a couple of people saying they've they've got their first blow bends today so that's um <laughs> that, that's, that's pretty well, good well that makes me extremely happy if only one person suddenly found something to do at the top end of their harmonica because after all we pay for 10 holes and if we just stick from mm. one to six that's bad economics <laughs> yeah not good value for money so uh yeah to go up the top end again you know <laughs> be able to play the the blue scale up there from mm. uh, the top four holes that's an integral yeah. part then of first position blues playing and when you do do what magic dick does or you can go up to the top end certainly on a live format as long as you don't overdo it it's one of those things which for a listening audience is, is elevating. It really, you know, yeah. draws you in and you turns heads, you know. So if only for that reason, get those, get those blow bends going. <laughs> and remember where they are. Don't forget, there's nothing in seven officially. One in eight, one in nine, two in ten. Okay. Yeah. Oh, God. My wife hates that top blow bend. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say my, my cat hates that top blow bend as well. When I, I'm trying to uh, learn overblowing as well. He has a bad day when I'm trying to do that. Well, I have to say, but, I'm teaching a class full of kids, whole class harmonica teaching is the best way to get their attention. I'm going deaf now. It's <laughs> effect on me, but when you do it in a class of kids, they're all like, Arr! it's like there's sort of someone scraping their fingernails down the block. Well, we don't have blackboards anymore, but you get the idea. Richard, I just wanted to say, if I may, a little tip for everybody, because um, if you can find the, that video um, of uh, Magic Dick playing live on YouTube, I didn't know until someone showed me recently, YouTube has a, a handy, little, uh, handy little option where you can slow the video down, either 25% or 50% without changing the key. So that's really handy if you want to play along. I use... Um... Piece of software called Audacity as well. Yeah, I've got got that as well. Yeah. And it's the the slow slow burner, slow downer, <laughs> the mighty slow downer. I think it's another piece of software that's. Yeah, there's, there's also a free app called AnyTune, which does. I think it can only works with um, like Apple 
um, Apple songs rather than Spotify, but yeah. you can slow everything down. You can change the pitch as well. So Which is great. Any that, 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 again, I, I mean, in some respects, I'm, I'm a bit reactionary or old school. Um, so when it comes to bends themselves and slowing stuff down, it's great to use modern technology. It really is very, very, very helpful. But don't forget, you know, when some, <laughs> some of us were starting out on, on all this, there was no YouTube. There was only vinyl. And so what you had to do was develop your powers of intuition and learning and uh, analysis uh, and figure it out. Um, and when it comes to, came to the bends, you didn't really have electronic tuners to show you how sharp or flat you were. You just had to find a tune mm. that needed that note and listen to what you were doing and decide whether you were sharp or flat. If you couldn't do that, just gauge the audience reaction at the end of a piece that you've played. If they didn't clap, you were flat. <laughs> if you, yeah. you're in tune, you got a decent response. But again, I get it. You know, I'm not averse to modern technology. It's very, very helpful. But I would encourage people, you know, we're, we're equipped with our natural GPS system and it's largely in our ears. So, uh, you know, go for it. Use it. Um, I just look in the time. There are a couple of other questions. Um, can you say something about those two, three draw bend notes on the last verse you covered? The way oh, these are played. Oh, crikey. We'll try and remember what it was. actually a pretty simple if you listen to the end of the track that's actually easy quite easy to pick up if that's the, the very last the end of the last section was that oh it's it's, it's the wrong bit <laughs> after all that effort Richard well perhaps it's something you can pick up on next time oh so I'm gonna say I mean am I using that I mean I'm going for the first bend I, I, I think it's the, bend. the trills is it, yeah. it might be the bends within the trills it's okay. We can we can pick it up. <laughs> so, oh, can you say something sorry. about those two, three draw bend notes on the last verse you covered? The way they are played is very particular after the trills. Is it? Oh, was it the bend? Know? Was it that bit? Where you where you bend the trill down? Is that what we mean? Yeah, the cordon's nodding. Ah, oh, right, 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 right. Okay. Clean trill. Take it down. And then there was the bark bit. That bit is literally a, it's an imp imprecise, it's not a, it's not a precise bend. It, it kind of, port, it carries itself a little bit. It's, it's more of a, an effect than a, than a clean note. Wah, wah. It's like ding, ding, power harping. Wah, wah. Slap, slap. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think yeah. that's what you meant. Yeah, it's not a precise note. It's more of a, an effect. Bang, bang. <laughs> Barking of a dog. Okay, Richard. Well, th thank you very much. Um, and just think that you have your, your, your um, sessions, don't you, on a Wednesday yeah, and Thursday? Yeah. On, yeah, on a um, beginners on a Wednesday at six on Zoom and intermediates advanced on a Thursday. Been getting up to all sorts of hijinks. Good to see Ben. He, he attends and Trevor both come along on a Thursday. Mm -hmm. But anyone's welcome. The details are on the harpsurgery.com, um, which was this one here. Looks like that, harpsurgery.com. And again, if you want to access the tabs and the notes it's this bit here there's a couple of pdfs you can download and then there's also a, a post there you could probably <clears throat> if you've got time have a little read there and take you into some of it as well or call me and i'll go through it with you anyway <laughs> get in touch and we can have a private run through together really take uh, it down to the nuts and bolts okay that's brilliant and we'll if we um we have a quick chat afterwards and then if you want to and do next week as well. I'm actually down to do two, but I don't mind uh, giving way to you. Just looking at the folks on the uh, 
on the Brady Bunch here at the moment. Give me a thumbs up if you would like to finish the job next week. Is that something which would be of interest? Yeah, yeah. to the electronic version. Okay, okay. Well, in that case, if you, if you, I, I'm happy to do that. I think I'm around. So, if I, I hadn't planned on going on holiday or anything just yet, so, <coughs> um, yeah, listen to the track in the meantime. Check out the notes. Yeah, yeah. There's lots of uh, wisdoms and stuff from Magic Dick on the on the notes that that I've produced as well. Okay, it goes into all the background, all the rig he used, all the effects that you need, techniques that you need to to do the job. Okay, so just keep your eye on the website and uh, you'll probably get a reminder message in the week anyway. So um, right. it's all right. So if we, if we take another...